Hello and welcome to another video. Well, today I'm going to present you with my new purchase, the Jaguar XJ 3.2 Sport X 300. Uh, I'm very sorry I haven't been uh, up posting any videos lately. I think it's been about a month since I post my bit on the side project, the the Austin 600 weight van aka the uh, Morris minor van but unfortunately the weather has been absolutely atrocious in this country uh, in May basically it's been basically the wettest month on record and unfortunately the uh, open air is my garage and I haven't been able to do any videos on the focus and I have a massive list of jobs to do and uh, oh well I just have to wait until I can actually do something about it but uh, let's go and show you my new purchase and here it is my Jaguar XJ 3.2 Sport X300 this is a 1997 model uh, which makes it uh, one of the last inline six Jaguar XJs actually. Uh, it was superseded by uh, the revised XJ, the X308, which came only with V8 engines, uh, replacing all the six cylinder and the V12 engines. And uh, as you can see here, already has a flat tire, but we'll come to that in a moment. So I bought this car on eBay and um, to a very nice chap, a very nice young chap who um, who found the car a while ago and uh, looked after it, brought it uh, uh, back up to life, recommissioned it, put it through an MOT um, and then kept it for a little bit. So I bought it off him. It was one of the best ads that I have ever seen uh, as a classified ad. Absolute fantastic description, very detailed, all the work done and so on and I'm very happy with the purchase. One of the best that I, that I can say I have made, uh, one of the most honest. So I would like to start first with the bodywork and um, you probably have seen on the previous video there are a few paint effects mainly on the bonnet area, on the roof, and also on the boot lid. You can see some uh, crazing in here, some uh, old uh, lacquer peel on the roof area which the previous owner tried to smooth it out and make it a little bit better and also some uh, uh, fading and crazing on the bonnet area. Um, I will try to get the replacement panels but it's going to be a little bit difficult because this collar is an aquamarine mica which is uh, almost something like a green turquoise um, but for some reason uh, the car is registered as blue on the DVLA so but yeah there is a very slight hint of blue depending of blue depending on what light you were looking at but nothing like the turquoise that uh, was available as an optional extra on uh, XJR6s. Um, so on, in regards to the bodywork, I'm very pleased to say that these chrome trim are in very good condition, there are no marks on them, there are very minor scuffs on the bumpers, like this one here, and uh, this one on the other side I think, and it's just only one small vent in there. But apart from that, it's actually all okay. All the cars that I have seen, and I've seen actually uh, about three or four XJs, um, they were not as good as this one in terms of the chrome trim, which is a bit harder to replace compared to a respray or a panel replacement. The other bit that will need the repair and attention will be this corner here on the wheel arch. And uh, but apart from that, the body it's actually pretty much straight, as you can see in here. There's no dents or anything like that. And the same thing is on the other side. Um, just this coach line in here, which has faded a bit. But I'm not sure if I should keep it or should repair it or uh, remove them altogether. Um, I don't know. I'm a bit torn about it. I do like coach lines in some cars, but. Mm, I don't know. Um, feel free to make your suggestions. 
and uh, let me know what you think about it. Oh, and here's the other side where it needs a little bit of uh, repair. But apart from that, it's actually pretty straight, the, the body. I'm very pleased about it. Now, the wheels. Uh, the um, These are called the, the Jaguar Dimple. They are actually diamond cut, but of course the corrosion has uh, taken over. I'm not going to get them professionally refurbished as yet. I'm going to try to do some sort of a DIY repair, but I still need to do some investigation first. That one is the one in the worst shape. So, um, uh, I don't know. I will look into it. Now, the XJs are very known to be uh, very rusty cars, especially on the wheel arches and underneath where the uh, uh, the front and rear subwaves attach to, uh, they corrode a lot. And I'm pleased to say that the the advisory that this car had on the previous MOTs was repaired, especially on the front axle, uh, just uh, just above the uh, uh, the mounting of the um, front subframe, and uh, there was a minor repair also at the back. But the seals are in great condition. They are very, very good, and as well as wheel arches. They are in really good condition. Very pleased with that, because they are areas. They can corrode like there's no tomorrow. So they are very, very solid. Uh, and it's not uncommon to see cars that uh, have had so many uh, repairs. Uh, within the budget that I wanted. In regards to that flat tyre, um, I did read the advisory on the pre on last year's MOT that the tyres were starting to perish a little bit, especially on the sidewalls, the cracking and so on. And I'm not surprised that happened on that one because I did uh, uh, adjust the pressure and a couple of days later that one just went. But the tyres are a bit old, which is, to be honest, is expected. There is some minor cracking on the side walls, and it's all on all the four tyres. But, uh, not to worry, I have factored in the cost of the tyres, and I'm going to have them replaced in just over a week, where I will be um, uh, purchasing a, a new set of four tyres and uh, also a front uh, steering wheel and alignment oh, it's a bit windy in here the tires are a bit old as you can see in here this mark here 0811 which means that it was made on week 8 of 2011 they are 10 years old and these cars are heavy and uh, they can be actually quite hard on the tires that one is actually not really fitted properly road rotation to that way instead of going that way okay that is a bit weird but uh, never mind and uh, oh and I forgot about this here this I think I'll just do at home with just a rattle can and try to repair it and uh, same with uh, the other uh, trim give it a good clean actually when uh, when I have a bit more time then I will do a proper detailing on this car well DIY detailing is something that uh, Carl Goro uh, does on his cars, but nevertheless something of quality. Now uh, let's go and have a look at the interior. And this car comes with a working floor. It needs a little bit of work, but. Um, at least everything works, the central locking and the alarm as you can see and look at this it's leather galore and I'm pleased to say that the interior is actually fairly clean and but of course I will do the usual treatment uh, the same one that I did on the Focus uh, as soon as I got it uh, and do a very deep clean and valeting. It's something that I actually enjoy doing. And uh, same thing in here. Uh, the leather is in good condition. There's no cracks or uh, rips or tears. Uh, it just probably needs a little bit of a clean and probably use one of those kits for furniture cleaning. 
and of course like almost every single XJ that I've seen yep the headlining needs to be done there is a kit from uh, Martrim I think that's the name of the company for about 50 pounds you can have it recovered yourself at home and that's exactly what I will be doing everything works all the electrics work oh and new uh, mats I think I found a set of SG Barrett and I think that's what I'm gonna get them from and as you can see here it's actually very pleasant um, the car has that typical smell from the 1990s it kind of reminds me of my dad's Rover 400 series that mix of uh, 90s synthetics like the velour the leather and so on it, it's strange but it kind of uh, feel uh, of um, at home feel with these cars um, some things of course needed to be done like uh, replace uh, some of these bulbs and um, the aircon the aircon does not work of course the blower and so on does work I needed to fix this uh, but it could be the case of regassing but I'll take that to a garage and I'll find out what's going wrong with it the clock doesn't work but it is also very common on these cars that these are not work and it's usually the uh, flexible ribbon that um, uh, connects the LCD display to the uh, um, printer circuit board that with time uh, burns out um, and then gets damaged and then it doesn't display anything but there's a kit online which I'll be looking into it the radio works absolutely um, perfectly uh, as well as the electric aerial actually the radio is actually much better than the one in the Focus and um, another piece of trim that needs to be fixed is this the ashtray lid which doesn't really click in place but I'm going to try to find a solution to get it fixed and of course here the cavernous glove box which uh, doesn't take much but anyway um, the lid is very in very good condition uh, also the other thing I noticed here it's actually a very slight crack I'm not sure if I can see, see through the camera uh, these microscopic cracks on it and the same thing on the other side as well but never mind I'll look into it but it's not really on my list of priorities um, one thing that I found on this car is I can't really get an optimum comfort position uh, I drove these cars back in the day uh, actually 20 years ago since I last drove one actually okay apart from when I picked up this car and um, I absolutely love the interior and so on and uh, I don't know I just don't feel can't find the right position uh, especially I find that the seat base is a bit too short so these are the back of my knees and this is the where the seat ends uh, they like they're so far apart they they're almost like in different time zones very weird and sometimes the uh, I found that the the, key, uh, the, uh, the parking brake lever digs into my leg I, but I'll look into that it's no problem um, this needs to be put back into place and um, that's it really let's just start the car I haven't started it for about a week so oh, very nice oh and the typical fan belt squeak all of the cars that I tested all of them made this squeak but anyway never mind uh, the car pulls very nice and strongly uh, never misses a bit really it pulls really, really well and uh, I think I've done uh, probably less than 100 miles um, I haven't used it uh, ever since uh, because I've just been very busy really and also in, eventually the, the tire has gone flat so I'm going to wait to fit new tires in order to be able to drive it uh, again um, okay the fan works but the aircon it always turns out automatically I don't know why does it do anyway it'll be probably because the temperature is set at 17 and um, that's it one thing that I notice with the steering is that if I 
do this very quickly it feels very stiff okay I have a flat tire but when I was driving if I do it very quickly then it suddenly very stiff and then it will lighten up again I did look up into it and I found out it's some uh, electrical connector or switch on the um, on the steering rack and uh, I think it's just uh, something to do with the speed sensitive connections because this car has a uh, speed sensitive uh, steering uh, power steering which means that it gets stiffer uh, as the speed goes and in terms of uh, uh, other things uh, oh yeah the uh, the indicator stock it seems to be a little bit loose because every time I uh, turn the indicators on the information on the onboard computer on the trip computer does seem to change and uh, I think the, the the spring has has gone so this is a bit loose and it's something that I'll be looking into but all the electrics work including the electrical windows they none of them are stiff or anything like that this is one idiosyncrasy that I don't get so it is one touch to go down and then I have to keep pressing continuously to go up it doesn't really make sense but anyway uh, the electric mirrors do work perfectly and as well all the interior lights marvelous and of course the electric seat goes down and up so now let's have a look at the engine Ooh, it's been ages since I have a, a car with a front hinge bonnet that was my uh, which one was I think it was the E32 or E34 I'm not sure which one it was I had both of them but I don't know which one was the last I had and here it is the mighty AJ16 engine the 3.2 liter not the uh, most powerful engine on the uh, Jaguar staple but to be honest it does for me I just want a nice lovely car to drive and to cruise and this is the reason why I went for a Jaguar XJ um, I wanted something a bit of a toy something a little bit different and after so many years owning BMWs and several other cars um, I really wanted a four-door saloon I've looked at Mercedes again I've looked at Volvos and Saabs but then again it was that appeal of rear-wheel drive uh, I had a Mercedes it was a good car but the XJ has something that I can't really describe. Volvo and Saabs are very good cars. I do like them very, very much. But they, they, I still prefer the rear wheel drive. Anyway, so back onto the engine. It drives uh, uh, very nicely. There is a very slight lumpiness, very slight. Uh, it could be something that we've uh, done in a service or probably with a lack of use. The car hasn't done many miles in the last year. And uh, the and in terms of what is bodywork, uh, there are no, there's no rust on the bulkhead or any other bits over there. All of the bits you see in here, it's all surface rust, which are easily to treat. The car has been parked in here and has been no leaks whatsoever, so I'm very pleased with that. Although there are some old leaks, which I'll probably wash them off at some point. Uh, I'll be looking into the aircon. Uh, but the car has been serviced, it's a shame that there is no toolkit, but I'll take care of that in a, in a while. And um, everything seems to be alright in here, it does have a brand new alternator and uh, new belts as well. So yeah, I'm very happy with it and uh, of course replace the famous bushes because these are crumbled like crazy anyway. Um, so let's just do a bit of the engine revving. It normally the best thing is just to let it to um, uh, to warm up a little bit. There is no smoke or anything like that on that engine. It's really good. Just a bit of a rev, not too much. I'm not sure if the. Um, engine mounts need uh, any work the, the, the engine just moves a little bit but could be uh, the way it is now and there's, there's 
the other one. Okay. And that's it. Oh, and I haven't shown you the boot. There you go. Nothing really much to see here. And everything works really pleased with it. I'm just going to shut this. To the tap here. And um, the lights, I'm going to look into them. Uh, there's a, you know, a lot of people that complain that these lights are not very effective. But I think I can sort it out with just a, a good wash and um, inside and then I replace them with Osram Night Breakers. But I'm very pleased with this car, very happy with it. I will, um, I will uh, be having some fun <laughs> doing some work, probably not so much underneath. Uh, when it comes to uh, to do any rust protection or uh, anything like that for the summer goes and then the salt on the roads starts to take over and uh, to destroy the cars underneath so that will be one of the very first areas that I will be tackling in terms of suspension it won't need work for now uh, everything is nice and smooth there's no clunkled suspension or any play on the steering uh, it actually does seem to be all right but I will find out as soon as I have new tires I will see how things will uh, will go. So there you go. That's it. I'm actually quite pleased with this car, and uh, I hope to see you in the next video. So thank you very much for watching. Take care, and uh, I will see you next time.